Hello and welcome back fellow Vuperians and today we're going to be building a re-entry chamber for re-entering the atmosphere. Now we've done this before but now we have uh, graphene which I've recently added to my mod and so things should be a little bit different. So if you're wondering how we simulate this it's quite simple. We have whatever our pod is for re-entry and then we have clone with plasma and we have the plasma get blown in the same direction as our pod, like so. This simulates re-entry heat. As you can see, there's a whole lot of it here because this is actually a little bit more intense than it would probably be. Uh, generally, we mix the fire, uh, fire together with the plasma, a little bit less plasma, a little bit more fire, Gives it a little bit more of a realistic simulation rather than it being like 8 bajillion degrees. Alright, let's see how this does. So as you can see, uh, it definitely is able to handle a little bit of it, just a massive brick of titanium. But there's definitely damage and the titanium is heating up. I mean, you can't see it glowing quite yet. But any moment now we are going to notice, I mean this over here is definitely melting and we can actually see that there's some damage. If I switch over to the uh, nothing display, you'll see that little bits of the titanium are moving around. They're being pushed up around the side. And if we just increase the amount of uh, plasma by a tiny bit, let's go ahead and add one more clone for plasma. We're going to see that, yeah. Just adding a tiny bit more plasma makes a huge problem. Look at how overheated this is. 1,000 degrees. And if we add one more pixel of plasma, it's now beginning to melt through. So, if you had a person inside of here, it would not be a good time. Not at all. They would uh, definitely die. Alright, so I've been thinking about how to actually design this to be a little bit more effective and here is what I have come up with. I'm building a little bit of a nose cone here out of graphene, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to right at the front here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put freeze powder just to try to get rid of that first uh, that first line of heat that's coming in we can kind of try to fight against it and it has a little bit of time to build up that coolness so our cooling system is able to kind of prepare also if for some reason the graphene melts through uh, the, the it'll it'll at least give it a second before things go really 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 wrong so now what we're gonna do is we're going to actually go in a little bit because we want to make it so that the the flames are gonna go around and not touch the titanium we've already discussed that but then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this we are going to have a completely air gapped here uh, and we're actually going to air gap it from this uh, graphene here as well we don't want it to be touching because we don't want any heat going into this chamber so we're going to go ahead and create this kind of vacuum sealed chamber here, which is going to have one connection point, which is going to be on top. So on the top of this, it will be connected. This is actually what's holding it. To be realistic, we'll do three little connections here to really hold it because it has to be able to hold the weight of a person. All right. So now this gap here should technically be enough to prevent too much heat from moving through. And even if that is the case, after that, we're gonna put an insulation layer on top. I'll clean this up by hand in a moment. Oh, that side actually went perfectly fine, but this side just had to be a little bit stubborn. All right, so now we've got this insulation layer inside of here, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have another layer of titanium. This layer of titanium has a very specific job, which is if something is to go horribly wrong, at least we aren't going to expose them to the open atmosphere. And then inside of here, we're going to go ahead and we are going to have our actual dude. So let's go ahead and grab our wax. 
now we have a new test. This one's a little bit smaller, a little bit prettier, and I think a lot more effective. All right, so now I'm going to remove a bit of this graphene because I do feel like this is kind of an absurd amount. And I'm gonna do it like so. All right, I think I'm gonna do it again right here. I think this is now a reasonable design to get this guy back. Let's create a little tiny antenna here uh, so that we can, we can communicate with Earth. <laughs> Everything needs an antenna. And then let's go ahead and get our clone and see how this fares. I know. I know, it's beautiful. It is a beautiful design, and I, we're using several uh, physics uh, cheats here, like having this vacuum sealed chamber around it to try to give him the best chance possible. The absolute best chance of survival. Head on, extremely fast, bring out the oxygen and the hydrogen. All right, we can see that our aerodynamics are working pretty much as we had planned. For additional simulation of this moving, we're gonna turn off the gravity uh, because he would be moving down so quickly that it would actually be pushing up gravity. It would almost be like gravity is pushing in the opposite direction, but it's okay. Um, so basically we need this air to be pushing up at him as quickly as we can get. And then the actual heat is probably going to help with that as well. Here we go. All right. So ignoring the fact that that just basically simulated the atmosphere literally exploding. Here it is. Here is the result of all of that work. So what we can see is an absolutely insane amount of heat going over this front here. The graphene is hitting 900 degrees, but the outside of this chamber that he's in is only at 300 degrees, which is perfectly reasonable for the insulation to handle. And then the titanium inside is at a super safe 22 degrees. Looking at this on the heat display, you can see exactly how it's going down, where this cone is picking up a ton of the energy, only some of it's making it up here and going around and through, and that's keeping him completely safe. Um, that's super, super good. Super good. Now, if for some reason it were to tumble, this is where we'd run into issues. If, for example, when you're playing Kerbal Space Program and your pod flips, it gets dangerous very quickly because the side of this pod is not designed to handle the heat. And it also, you can tell the amount of turbulence because it keeps bouncing back and forth like this. It's not very aerodynamically capable. It's really, really, really pushing these materials to the limit. You can see the titanium is getting very, very hot and glowing each time this happens. And the outside of the personal containment unit is hitting 600, 700 degrees. If this pod isn't made right side up soon, it's going to pick up enough heat that it's going to be over 900 degrees. Oh, really not a good time. Granted, because of how this is shaped, it should flip back and it should flip back rather quickly. But you know, I mean, it could actually be worse because in the case that he were to rotate completely upside down, aero, oh shoot, we actually accidentally got the fire inside of it. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, if he were completely upside down, the aerodynamics are working against us now because the fire is actually being held against the surface and it's sliding all the way down. This is kind of giving us the maximum amount of heat that we could possibly get, and it is just not a good time. And we have ambient heat on as well, which is working in our favor. So if we turn off ambient heat and give it the hard mode, you can definitely see that A, this is now getting extremely hot, which is not what we wanted. This antenna is actually, should probably be dead by now, so I'll take that off. But this, this is not good. 
This is a very, very dangerous situation for Bob inside of there. And the temperature of the titanium here is getting to 1000 degrees. Just pushing it a tiny, tiny bit further would be the end. For example, let's say this active freezing system, which is actually kind of cheating, weren't there. Well, now things are getting incredibly, incredibly hot. And let's say we just increase the temperature a tiny bit of this uh, gas that's actually hitting it. And now we're looking at, oh, maybe it was hotter when it was both oxygen and hydrogen. All right, one sec. Let's go ahead and put just a tiny, tiny bit of plasma on there. Where is it? There's the nothing display. All right, grab a tiny bit of plasma, pop it on there. And you can see extremely quickly, we are having a containment breach which after a few more seconds, I mean, it's not the end of the world yet. Technically, he could still survive this if we're to flip back the correct way. But now we've got an issue because now the uh, insulation is burning and the insulation burning is going to be the end of this. Any second now, this dude is going to, oh, well, he should be melted. It's just, he's not touching the floor. Let me fix that. Yeah. It is game over for our dude. But let's go back to when things weren't quite so dire. And let's see, even with that additional amount of plasma, how it goes when things are right side up. It may, it may not survive. It may survive. I'm not sure, actually. Let's see. All right. And we will go ahead... And add, I mean, the outside of this pod is at 100 and something degrees, nothing too serious. Obviously, this part that connects here is getting pretty hot, and the, the graphene down here is extremely hot because it's being hit head on. All right, let's go ahead and increase the amount of plasma that's hitting. And it's, it's definitely heating up. It's definitely getting toasty, but you'll notice that still it has not failed yet. Whereas before it failed pretty much immediately when it flipped. Um, let's flip it onto its side, see what happens. We, oh, 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 does it have a chance? It's, it's so toasty. It is so toasty. No freeze powder, which is a little bit cheaty. Hit straight directly on the side. Let's get rid of this antenna because it would definitely die. Uh, it's definitely getting more toasty than we'd want. It's at 1400, 1500 degrees. I'm, I'm honestly shocked. I'm, I'm shocked it's not dead. Uh, I, I would have assumed in like all circumstances that it would have it would have melted by now thankfully our insulation is doing its job and as long as the insulation doesn't catch on fire should be fine so this is why we should use asbestos because asbestos doesn't doesn't burn and it's insulation so darn people who banned asbestos how dare you I actually don't know how this is working for so long. It should it should be just gaining heat because I guess there's a little bit of freeze powder in here still, but without ambient heat on, I'm I'm actually shocked that this is not melting. It's doing an incredibly good job at not melting. Huh. Okay. All right, I guess we just were really really good job. But obviously this design here with it hitting straight at the bottom is just the most effective. And we can see that aerodynamically, it's not creating a ton of turbulence. The stream is completely steady and our dude is not even close to getting burned. I mean, he's got a very, very stable situation going on here. So let's go ahead and push it to its absolute limits. Let's go ahead and get additional plasma and uh, Turn up the heat. Oh! Yikes! Oh, wow. Wow. Pure plasma is just so hard to deal with. 
so hard to deal with. I'm curious if we did the same thing but made this entire section uh, into graphing if we'd get a little bit more time. Alright, so here's the huge, huge amount of plasma coming through. It's impacting and yeah, yeah, we, we get a few, a few more frames. Actually, we get a bit more time before things go wrong. And then uh, actually the cap lasts longer than the connections to the cap and it's, it's actually fighting hard. Look at it go. Wow. Wow. That, that's kind of insane. That is kind of insane. Honestly, lasted way longer than I expected, and this piece of the graphene is actually still surviving to this day. I mean, any second now it's going to burst open and this freeze powder is going to pour out, which is probably the only thing keeping it balanced right now, but very impressive. Very impressive, to say the least. Oh shoot, I didn't mean to do that. Just a, just a ball of graphene is able to survive for a, for a little bit. A little bit. Alright guys, thank you for watching these beautiful simulations. I really appreciate you watching. You should go and check out Valor if you want to go suggest something for the next episode. I check Valor all the time. It's over at V-A-L-O-U-R.gg. It's my social media platform I'm building with an awesome team. And you should go check it out because it respects your privacy and it, it is cool. Kapish, kapash. See you all next time. I'm out.